subscriptions have gone down for Disney. It's actually been really fascinating to watch. They have been going down for everyone for kind of a while. And then in the most recent numbers that we've seen, Netflix surged. So they're really making this big comeback while Disney has continued to struggle. So earlier, they had reported losses uh, that had narrowed a bit on the streaming business, $512 million in the third quarter. That would be from $1.6 billion in the year earlier period. So good news, they're reducing some expenses. And that improvement is certainly a sign that some of the cost controls that Bob Iger was putting in place are having a positive effect. In fact, Wall Street analysts polled by facts that had expected a quarterly loss of $758 million, but what do you know? Disney's revenue rose 3.8% to 22.3 billion. And that was thanks partly, partly to the parks business, which has seen a little bit of a resurgence and operating income uh, remaining flat at 3.6 billion. Look, I do think that this is a company that has been through a lot. It doesn't seem to know its way. It doesn't seem to know who it is. And that's in part because it's gotten caught in this cultural mess. When you look at companies like, say, Bud Light, Anheuser-Busch, they're another great example of companies not knowing how to na navigate this space, this very highly politically charged space that's got a lot of cultural attachments associated with it. And so they think, okay, the answer is to go out and hire this influencer, Dylan Mulvaney, and they have no clue, no idea what that's actually going to mean to the actual customers. And in the case of something like Bud Light, it's just as easy. Frankly, it's better to switch to Miller Light, right? Better beer. Sorry. Sorry for all you Bud Light drinkers out there. I've never been a fan, but you can just easily switch beers. Now with Disney and its content, is there a rival that can really come on the scene. I mean, Netflix is certainly one on the streaming side, and I've got to believe that there will and can be others in terms of creating good family content. That's, that's the problem right now because they're getting away from those family values. And so you've seen other institutions try to come up with solutions. I mean, the guys over at Daily Wire are doing that. Um, and we've seen Great American News, the Great American Family Network, that's the new rival to Hallmark, someone is going to create a huge opportunity in this space because Disney has made a series, a series of errors. Anyway, um, let me see what else I can tell you. In the U.S. and in Canada, Disney Plus had 46 million subs. This is down from 46.3 million in the previous quarter. And that, again, is the second time ever that the company saw Disney Plus lose North American subscribers. So that indeed is a problem. Television pro is a problem. The television business continued its decline. The company's uh, linear TV segment that Iger wants to spin out of, well, that includes things like FX. It includes ABC, The View. Remember I told you about that. Also ESPN and the Disney Channel. Well, its operating income, it did fall 23% to $1.89 billion. That's about $100 million less than what analysts had anticipated. So, look, I do think that they've got to figure their way out of this hole, so to speak. They've got their challenges, and their challenges are in part self-induced. Yes, it's a t tough political, cultural environment, but it's so important to know who you are and what you represent and to really stick to that and to remember the importance of your brand. Hey everyone, Trish Regan here. If you enjoyed that clip, please do me the favor of subscribing to the channel. Just hit that little subscribe button right over there. Did I do that right? Uh, not quite, but you know where it is. Subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so that you get the alerts, and I'll see you back on the show.